Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a Domain Aggro deck, and it's pretty similar to one I featured a couple months back, although it's gotten a few upgrades. Leyline of the Guild Pact is the main one. This enchantment can start on the battlefield if it's in our opening hand, and then says each non-land permanent we control is all colors, and lands we control are every basic land type in addition to their other types. So if we start with a Leyline of the Guild Pact on the battlefield, we immediately have the full domain enabled, meaning we can cast a Leyline Binding on turn 1, which is pretty ridiculous, and then we've got our Brawler hitting for 5 damage instantly, we've got Rana's Firebrand pumping for just a single red mana, getting plus 2 plus 2, and then our Gaia's Might can give a creature plus 5 plus 5 for just a single green mana, so these are just some of the domain payoff cards. Then the Weather Seed Treaty can also potentially pump up our creatures with the final chapter, and we can read ahead if we want to start from chapter 3, giving a creature plus 5 plus 5 and trample until end of turn if we have all 5 basic land types. Can also be used to help complete our domain by getting a basic land on chapter 1, also helps us ramp in a way, and then on chapter 2 makes a sapling token that we can eventually pump up as well. Now, of course, starting with Leyline of the Guild Pact is great, but it's not a guarantee, so this deck does need to mulligan somewhat aggressively to try and find it, because it makes a world of difference if we have a Leyline of the Guild Pact or if we don't. And then another card that synergizes quite well with it is Case of the Shattered Pact. So this 2-mana case is a colorless enchantment, I think that's the first time we've seen it. it. says when it enters the battlefield we get to search up a basic and put it in hand. And then to solve this case there are 5 colors among permanents we control. And as you'll notice, we don't have any blue or black creatures in this deck. Instead, we're just relying on Leyline of the Guild Pact being on the battlefield in order to solve our case. Now, we do need to wait until our end step to solve it, but then at the beginning of combat on our turn, target creature we control gains Flying, Double Strike, and Vigilance until end of turn. Vigilance, very useful to play around Wandering Emperor. Flying gets over any blockers, and then a Double Strike pairs exceptionally well with our pump effects, such as Gaia's Might giving plus 5, plus 5, can potentially set up a one-hit KO, and then our Weather Seed Treaty can potentially read ahead and immediately give plus five plus five and trample. So that's one of the combo kills that this deck is capable of. And the Cacophony Scamp also plays quite well with that game plan, as we can pump it up and then after dealing damage sacrifice it to deal more damage on the way out. So that's why the Scamp is here. And then we've got a bit of life gain as well with Lightning Helix, can be very useful against Monorad Aggro as a removal spell that gains a bit of life back, can also go upstairs to maybe deal those last points of damage. And then Angel Fire Ignition is another very nice tool against Red Aggro. The Vigilance once again helps play around a Wandering Emperor and uh, can also flash it back so we get two uses out of it. So in the late game, if our opponent is maybe holding some sorcery speed removal, we can wait until we can give our creature haste and attack instantly, also maybe getting the benefit of our case so the opponent doesn't get a chance to remove our creature. And that's also why we have four copies of Fleetfoot Dancer in this deck. I was already playing it in the previous iteration of the deck, but now it's even more important with four copies of Case of the Shattered Pact, having a haste creature that we can immediately give double strike to is incredibly important. And then the life gain also doesn't hurt against a red aggro. And then our mana base, of course one of each basic to search up with our case or with a weather seed treaty is important. And then we're playing a bunch of fast lands, so we don't have to worry about lands entering tapped, since we're not playing a bunch of the tri lands outside of, of course, the Naya colored one, since we are kind of a base Naya deck, just splashing a bit of blue and black just to enable domain. We could also play with Thran Portal, which I also played in the previous version of this deck, but it's a bit of a nombo with Leyline of the Guild Pact, in the sense that if we start with Leyline, we don't really need Thran Portal, and then it's still a land that potentially enters tapped and deals us damage, so I'm much happier just playing Battlefield Forge as an untapped land that can still help cast our spells early, and then hopefully we'll get the domain through our case and weather sea treaty in case we don't have our ley line, but of course we'll be trying to mulligan it to try and find it in the first place. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, we've got ley line and case of the shattered pact, so we just need a creature now, and then in the meantime we've got a one mana ley line binding. So I'll give it a shot. So between Case and Gaia's Might, we can deal a ton of damage out of nowhere. So really, any creature will do. And there's a creature, so... This can actually set up a turn 3 kill. 
Turn one scam, turn two case, enable it, turn three attack. Six power double strike, and then sacrifice it. And then a fleet foot dancer is not a bad follow up in case they can answer the scamp. This may get countered. And there's a Meg Disappear, that's disappointing. Okay, we'll have to get there without our case. Binding, maybe to answer the wedding announcements, and then we can still play a Firebrand. So I'm not gonna attack here. And then the Firebrand can uh, prevent their token from blocking next turn. They've got another one. Now I don't mind attacking as much, because if they block Scamp we get to take out both tokens. And uh, Firebrand can also pump itself up. Opponent takes it, so in that case, pump Firebrand. And then I'm kind of in favor of Gaia's Might on Scamp. So that deals 12 damage. And then Lightning Helix is lethal. Don't think we need to proliferate to wedding announcements. Although I guess it's not necessarily a bad thing either, since our opponent would miss out on a 1 1 token. Although they would get uh, plus 1 plus 1 to the team a turn sooner. So yeah, we've got a lethal burn spell in the hand. Just need them to tap out without gaining life. Opponent attacks to draw card. And yeah, they're gonna need removal for Firebrand. Cut down doesn't do it, so probably gonna have to be a two mana removal spell. At which point they are unlikely to counter my Lightning Helix. Go for the throat, so unless they've got a spell pierce here, this is lethal. I guess we can test out the waters with a leyline binding. Possible they have a cut down in hand. So they do seem to have a one mana instance. Just gotta hope it's not spell pierce. And that resolves. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and what do we think of our hand? Three basic clan types, play Brawler, any third land gets us Treaty, which can get a fourth basic clan type. So, yeah, for not having a Leyline, I think this is keepable. Might still be a little slow if we're on the back foot. It's gonna take a while to deploy a Leyline Binding. But uh, we can hit pretty hard. Put on a green white. All right, now any third land, ideally not a Jetmere's Garden, will do here. And our point on green white enchantments. So two helix or not two helix? That is a question. I guess we could also Leyline Binding to be a bit more mana efficient, since I don't really need to keep up Gaia's Might against this uh, opponent. Yeah, I think it's still worth it to deal with the Naturalist, since that will let them empty their hand very quickly. And then next turn we can maybe Treaty, since we still have a land drop for now. Now, of course, Binding could be cheaper than Helix in the future, but Helix can also maybe go upstairs. And most of the cards we need to deal with will be creatures that we can Helix. Kallax still dies to Helix. And Firebrand the draw. Yeah, I mean, we want to get this treaty going to develop our mana. Although if Kallax connects, that could be very bad. So I guess step one attack, see if they block 
in which case we can maybe Gaia Smite, and then I'm gonna end up Helix and Calyx. Do it now or wait. I guess we can wait in case they Audacity Calyx. Don't expect any Insta Speed tricks. And this might throw off their sequencing. Let's say they had another Calyx in hand, then now they cannot deploy it for a turn. So this might finally be our window to play Weather Sea Treaty. Weaver can also be pretty effective, especially when paired with removal. Although, at least we'll only have the one creature for potential ossification. And yeah, we are out of removal, so it's not like I can really deal with it. So yeah, Treaty gets either Swamp or Island. And then we can hit for 4 damage. If they double block, I'm fine with it. So chances are pretty high that our opponent can do something busted here. A Reign of Truth, that's acceptable actually, since we're at 23. Even if they double the trigger, it's pretty far from lethal. So what else do they have in hand that's not an enchantment? Maybe another Reign of Truth? Although then they were better off waiting. Alright, they did have ossification. Still missed out on one damage here since they could have played it first. So we take eight. And next turn we could take another eight. If I ignition... Let's see, we could also Gaia's Might. How much damage are we talking? This is plus four, five, six, seven. So it's not quite lethal. Next turn we also get the pump from Treaty. We want to make sure we don't run into another ossification, because if they double it they can exile two creatures, which means maybe keeping the ignition for next turn to give something haste. Yeah, kind of a interesting spot. Maybe it's just Treaty get a land. And then next turn I might be able to ignition the Firebrand and Gaia's Might. So Island is still fine, so we've got to full domain. Could also Might defensively if needed. Alright, one card left. What could it be? Another Reign of Truth. So this companion is going to hit for a ton of damage. Or they're going to pump Weaver. Okay, otherwise we could have just jumped Companion. Now we can easily take 13 and kill them on the way back. They're actually not quite dead on board, since I guess they don't know about our hand. But we would get plus 5, plus 5. So, a couple ways we can do this. I guess the most fun way is Firebrand, Ignition, Gaia's Might. Going to one in the process. Sweet. So close one here against a green white enchantment. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand is functional but pretty mediocre. Don't have full domain. Couple two drops, binding is gonna cost three mana. So in kind of a more low powered standard, this might be good enough, but we got a mulligan for the broken hands. And yeah, this hand has some pretty nifty tools. Can get rid of a land. And then we've got Leyline and case of the Shattered Pact. So this brawler could potentially attack for ten. Don't really mind trading scam for the opponent's 2-drop. Opponent red-white, so maybe playing white for Lightning Helix. We'll get a land. K 
case is solved. And then uh, Ignition's also an option next turn, but I imagine we still want to play Brawler. And then Fleetfoot Dancer is not a bad leftover if we get to 4 mana. War Leader's Call, another reason to splash white. Not too threatening right now. And a Weather Sea Treaty. So I think the safer place to play Treaty. Actually, can we just win here? If I Treaty start from the third chapter, plus five, plus five, hit for six, another six, and then sacrifice for another six. So that's 18 damage, so we're one short. So I guess we'll just uh, start from chapter one. Get a basic so I can play Dancer next turn, which is going to be pretty effective. Could also sacrifice now just to proliferate, so we get our Sapperling, and then next turn we can pump our Sapperling with the third chapter. It's also kind of an interesting thought, but uh, I'll just keep my scamp. So, opponent's gonna need lots of interaction here. Anim has good synergy with Phoenix Jig and War Leader's Call, but uh, yeah, that's not gonna be good enough to survive. Can't quite go for lethal, but uh, Dancer gaining 8 life is gonna be pretty effective still. And then next turn we've got plus five, plus five coming up. And we can add Ignition on top of that, maybe Ignition at the Nishoba Brawler. So a slightly more aggressive line could have worked out better here, since we would have been able to close out the game a turn sooner. But if our opponent ended up with a bunch of spot removal, then we might have regretted it. So here, taking six, even if they have a bunch of burn spells, it's pretty safe to take it, or we can block with, let's say, Cacophony Scamp. I'm just gonna take it. I don't think we're at risk of dying. Bunnycorn's fine. I guess they could technically fling it with the uh, Cell Sword for another 8 damage. Alright, who do we want to pump? I guess the Fleetfoot Dancer. And that's 18 damage by itself. Or we can Brawl or Ignition. We've got options. Alright, our opponent's still taking 18 in the air. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. This is an easy mulligan. This I can keep, and uh, yeah, keep one ley line. The other one can go to the bottom. And then we've got Case of the Shattered Pact plus a creature, which could hit for a ton of damage. So we'll see if our opponent's packing some removal. So could play the case now, could play Firebrand first, and then next turn Case plus Scamp. And maybe get an attack in. Now we have to worry about counter spells, I guess. So maybe play this camp, see if that resolves, and then go for the case. Alright, there doesn't seem to be any instant speed interaction. And get mountain. Alright, the case is solved, so next turn Firebrand could pump for 1 mana and hit for 10 damage essentially. Field of Ruin, normally pretty good against the Domain deck, but uh, not going to be super effective here. Okay, so yeah, stick to the plan. 
Could of course see some instant speed removal on the Firebrand. But I'm still gonna pump it since we don't have anything else going on. Alright, that works. Opponent takes 11. Now I probably shouldn't play my author Firebrand in case her opponent's playing some 4 mana sweepers. And next turn we can probably cross the finish line. Even if they answer Firebrand 1 for 1, then Scamp can still gain Double Strike, hit for 2, sacrifice it 3, and Lightning Helix is another 3. If they play Wandering Emperor, then Exiling Scamp isn't enough when Firebrand can hit for 10. So they need multiple spells here. I'll keep the Lightning Helix a surprise. Opponent discarding a Demolition Field to hand size. Alright, let's go to Attackers. Vigilance pretty key at playing around Wandering Emperor. Attack. And then, yeah, I don't even have to do anything if I don't want to, but... Eh, may as well pump. Don't really need the mana. And there's Emperor, so can only exile Scamp here at the most. So, Firebrand's still lethal. I've learned much during my travels. Let me show you. Yeah, Leyline plus Case. It's pretty sweet. Could also Helix my own Scamp, but may as well go face. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and... Uh, this isn't really a domain hand, it's more kind of a Naya beatdown deck. We've got turn 2 Helix, Treaty, and then Double Dancer. There are matchups where this hand's decent, thinking of Monorad aggro for instance. So I'll give it a shot. Definitely not your traditional hand with this deck. Opponent might be on their own domain deck, but the more rampy variant. In which case this hand's not great. But we can play turn to Brawler if we'd like. And then uh, Treaty still sets up our Fleet Foot Dancer while also increasing our basic line types. Opponent does have a Ley Line Binding, it seems. But decides not to go for it. Interesting. Goes for a Virtue of Persistence instead. So they still have a Ley Line Binding in hand, we suspect. We'll see how that lines up. Get Island or Swamp. So if they have a Binding, we want them to bind the Brawler as opposed to the Fleetfoot Dancer if possible. Even though I can maybe combine Brawler with Ignition to get in for a nice bit of damage. Opponents may be going for Sunfall now, so we don't get any damage from Chapter 3. Nope, Topiary Stomper. So they still have one mana binding available here if they get an island, although two mana is good enough. Gets a Swamp. Well, might be time to Helix face. I don't see it really doing anything else for me. So we can pump the token. And now play Dancer and Smash. And then our opponent likely exiles the Dancer. Takes 9. And then we gotta hope they don't have an Atraxa. Okay, no Leyline Binding, so maybe they didn't have it after all. Maybe a Hurt Migration that they're gonna hard cast. No, just a Tap Land. Hit for four, maybe second main Sunfall. So they won't be able to animate the Incubator token. So I can get in with the Dancer. Does Scam do it? Scam plus Ignition. Yeah, that's six damage. All right. Three 
threading the needle here. Take action. And another 3 damage. Awesome. Close one against Domain, even without our Leyline. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we've got Leyline plus Case. The only creature comes from Weather Sea Treaty, so it's far from an optimal hand, but I'll give it a shot. Can cast Leyline Binding on turn 1, Case get a land, and then hopefully we'll have drawn some creatures in the meantime. And there's one of them, so. Could, of course, still keep a binding for a potential 2-drop. Which, yeah, I mean, has its merits. So I can play the case without needing to kind of uh, take a turn off to cast a binding. Our opponent is just a red-white tokens deck, it seems, with Novice Inspector. If they went Mountain into Demolition, we could binding the token in response so they can't make the 1-1 one -one Goblins. But now I think I gotta play my case to hit my line drop for next turn. The case is solved. And then we might try to set up Scamp pumped by Treaty and Ignition to hit for a ton of double strike damage and then sacrifice it. And yeah, the red-white tokens deck doesn't have a lot of interaction to prevent that from happening. But there's the demolition, so... Interestingly enough, would have worked out better for us if their land came into play untapped earlier. This also kind of highlights one of the issues with the red-white decks in standard, especially the non-human or non-legendary ones, is that they still have a pretty rough mana base. But yeah, opponent's going off here. Looks like a Convoked Knight Errant. Finding another Knight Errant and Recruiter. So next turn our opponent can attack for approximately a million damage. And Warden. Which can still activate with a Blood Token, so yeah, very impressive turn here. All thanks to Gleeful Demolition. A Leyline Binding. Yeah, I think it's Scamp Double Binding. And then try and set up the kill next turn somehow. Although it's going to be difficult. They can only activate Warden as a sorcery, so I don't think there's a need to binding right away. Alright, let's do the thing I wanted to do earlier. Otherwise I get to give those tokens haste as well. And then I imagine they just smash with a recruiter. We'll let them attack and then binding the Knight Errant. So, still a ton of damage coming across. Is it lethal? 6, 10, 16? Not quite. So what's the best I can do? Treaty start from chapter 3, plus 5 on this camp. So that hits for 6, 12, sacrifice it for another 6. That's uh, 18 damage. So not quite enough, sadly. If I ignition, then we gain 6 life. Does that keep me alive? We're at 9. And I'll have a 3-3 three, three scamp. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's our best bet. Don't want to sacrifice it. And then next turn we can do the treaty play I mentioned. Which will now be lethal, so... Yeah, we might still have a chance. <laughs> no opponent top decked another recruiter. I was about to say, unless they top deck another recruiter, which of course they did. Alright, now we're super dead. GG's. On to the next one. Okay, 
Okay, we're on the draw, and we've got Leyline plus Case of Shattered Pact. So we just need a creature now, which is nowhere to be seen. We do have a one mana Leyline Binding as removal, and then Gaius Might can set up lethal with our case if we just get a single attack in. So I think I still keep. The upside's just too high. And hopefully our opponent's deck isn't filled to the brim with removal. They might be on a cave deck. Well, let's see if they have a counterspell. Wouldn't be surprised. That resolves. And doesn't matter too much what we get. I guess there's a small chance they can remove my enchantment. But we have a backup play line. Is their opponent just blue-white control? That's gonna make it tough. Although... Do have a Fleetfoot Dancer coming up next turn. It will also have Vigilance, thanks to the case. So it doesn't get answered by Wandering Emperor, at least. He leaks the draw. Yeah, I mean, we could just wait for them to tap out and then set up the one-hit KO. Dancer plus Gaia's Might is 18 damage. And then Lightning Helix is lethal. Problem is, if our opponent starts to do things proactively at instant speed, we're gonna fall behind. Just don't think Dancer's likely to either resolve or connect. So we'll try and be patient. Alright, Treaty gives us something else to do in the meantime. Not sure whether to start from Chapter 1 or Chapter 2. The extra mana could actually come in handy, especially if we need to play around conditional counter spells. Five mana, and our opponent has a Sorting City for our Leyline. Yep. Okay, so if I want a Lightning Helix, I better do it now. Now the case is still solved, so that part doesn't really matter. So going for Dancer still seems a little sketchy. Problem is next turn they can flash back Deluge, so things are only getting worse for me. Yeah, I think we have to commit. And then next turn we get to pump our token and uh, give a double strike so that can also present lethal by itself. Our opponent did have a get lost, as we might have suspected. So, yeah, I guess Gaius Might would have only been plus two plus two since we are pretty far from full domain. So this might not actually be a bad thing. So I guess Treaty also doesn't quite do as much as we would like next turn. Need to get the Leyline back in play. Get Lost also answers enchantments, so they actually have multiple ways to interact. So this is only plus two. So we're essentially attacking for eight. Could have tried to main phase a ley line and then Gaia's Might. Could be plus five plus five for lethal. Seems kind of unlikely. Alright, that connects. So we'll try a ley line again. Gets negated, that's fine. Now we get to resolve another treaty. Starting from chapter one, I want to say. More likely to draw the planes naturally. 
Okay, so we will have the full domain if we play our second ley line. And that uh, sapperling token could present lethal. Put on negates again, yeah. Pretty rare to see multiple main deck negates. So we have three basic line types, which would still be enough for power double strike. Although lockdown is going to try to get rid of our stuff, so we want to binding the lockdown in response to the trigger. Otherwise, we lose our token for good. That worked. Okay, another Gaius might bit overkill here since we're already attacking for 8 damage. So do they have more instant speed interaction is a question. Wandering Emperor doesn't do it. And Anchorage blocking also is not going to do it, since we have double Gaius Might. But I guess we'll let them block first. So a Trample for 4, plus another 7. And well, looks like we got there. Super uh, grindy game against blue-white control, but uh, yeah, our case, once it's solved, is still very effective. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, we've got Leyline, but not much else is the problem. No creature whatsoever, only one land, so I think uh, I gotta mulligan that one. This is much, much better. Get rid of Helix, and then we've got Leyline, Pact. And two creatures, so if one of them survives, we can deal a ton of damage. And yeah, against Mono Red Aggro with turn one Kumano. So, hopefully one of them can stick around. And uh, may as well start with a Brawler. Since it survives, play with fire. Next turn, Firebrand, I can pump to save it from a play with fire. Gonna be a scapegoat, a new addition, and a phoenix chick. Okay. So we can't really block here. Take three. Now, sadly, the case doesn't get solved instantly. It takes a turn for it to be solved. Otherwise, we could have attacked for 10 damage here. But instead, attack for five, play the case, and then next turn hit for 10 versus play firebrand and then um, I'll be able to hit for 5 next turn for 10 and then maybe get the case going feels a little bit better Elden is next, so I could try and block Etching and then pump Firebrand for one mana. And unless they have some removal here or a Monstrous Rage, it would work out. If they have a play with Fire, then they can respond to me pumping, which would be a bit of a setback. But we're also kind of getting beaten down, taking 7. So next turn they can likely present lethal, so I think I gotta block... And then we might see a 1 mana instant here. Alright, it is Monstrous Rage. Still trade at least. And Angel Fire Ignition, wow. Yeah, that should uh, keep us out of burn range. As much as I want to get this Case of the Shattered Pact going, gaining 7 feels more important. 
Opponent's got one card left, so can't imagine them surviving. I'm definitely gonna take it. Don't even have a choice since this card is suspected, so it has menace. And uh, Gaia's Might is not a bad way to close it out. Or we could flash back Angel Fire Ignition. Opponent's at 8, so just gonna go for it. I guess there is one card I didn't consider here, which is uh, Witchstalker Frenzy. Which was a reason to flash back Ignition, actually, since they only have 3 mana. So if I attack and go for Gaia's Might, I guess... Hmm. Yeah, I should have cast a Gaia's Might before attacking, if I was going to go for it. Now we could still lose to Witch Talker Frenzy, dealing 5 damage. Alright, if they animate Foundry, then we're in the clear. But yeah, even though we were super far ahead, still gotta think about how we can potentially lose. Now, of course, if they had Frenzy, they likely would have cast it in their turn, so... Chances of them having it weren't super high, but uh, still worth thinking about. Okay, we're on the draw. Do we want to keep this hand? It's another one of those hands that's functional, but maybe too fair. Only three of our five basic land types. Curving Brawler into Angel Fire Ignition could be good enough against some red aggro starts, for instance. But we're still probably going to be on the back foot, so... Yeah, let's just mulligan for a more broken hand. And yeah, this has a Leyline of the Guild Pact, can cast Binding for one mana. Question is, what else do we keep? Scamp plus Gaia's Might can technically set up a turn 2 kill if we top deck another Gaia's Might. Kinda wanna keep more creatures in general, although Scamp's not that exciting without Gaia's Might. Can't really imagine bottoming the Firebrand. So maybe it is just Scamp. Facing black green, and we actually top decked Gaia's Might. Oh boy. Although, on the draw, it's pretty likely that our opponent would either have a blocker or a removal spell. Insidious Roots. Could binding that. Right now, it doesn't do anything, so. I think we can wait. Play Firebrand, hope our opponent doesn't have a, a Liliana of the Veil. That card's pretty rough to face for our deck. Gorehound's fine. And a Dread Knight. Okay. Well, we can do some damage here. Pump Firebrand, double Gaia Smite, that's 15. But uh, I think we'll settle for... Firebrand activates. Attack. And then use one Might to get in for 10, and then keep Binding available at instant speed. And then we could try again next turn. Tortoise doesn't matter, so we should have it. Again, Binding the Tortoise. And then attack plus Gaia's Might. And that's another 10 ball. Alright, so we get to see our domain aggro deck in action, and the deck is exceptional whenever we get to start with our Leyline of the Guild Pact on the battlefield, but of course, that's never a guarantee. Even if we mulligan aggressively to try and find it, we may not get there. And then the deck is also pretty matchup dependent. If our opponent is packing a lot of spot removal, then it's going to be pretty difficult to ever connect with one of our creatures. But that being said, if we do start with our Leyline, then it feels like we're almost playing a different format at times, where we get to pull off some of those crazy combos and potentially even win on turn two if the stars align. So it's definitely a fun deck, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend it as a competitive choice. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.